In the last lecture, we learned that Node.js is built around event-driven architecture and we also saw a few examples there. Now in this lecture, let's learn how to emit custom events and how to react to those custom events. Let's go to VS Code. Now in order to work with events in Node.js, we need to export events package from the node. The events is a built-in or we can say the core package of Node.js. So let me scroll up and the place where we are importing all our core modules let's go ahead and let's import the events module there so here i will create a variable i will call it events and to import a package we use the require function and to that we specify the name of the package the name of the module here the name of the module is events all right and this is our custom module so let me cut it from here and let me paste it after this comment. All right, so here we have imported this events module. Now this events module gives us an event emitter class. So what we are going to do is, we are going to create an instance of that event emitter class. So here I will create a variable. I will call it maybe my emitter. You can name this variable anything. And here to this my emitter, we want to assign an instance of the event emitter class and that event emitter class is provided by the events package. So here I can say new and we are storing the events package inside this events variable. On that, let's call this event emitter. So this event emitter is a class and to create an instance of this event emitter class, we need to call its constructor. Okay, so this my emitter is storing an instance of the event emitter class. Now, in the last lecture, we also learned that an event emitter emits some named events. And when that event is raised or emitted, we can listen to those events. Here, we are creating an instance of this event emitter class. Using this instance, we can raise or emit custom events. So here, let's go ahead and let's emit an event using this my emitter. So basically, this my emitter is storing an instance of the event emitter class. On this, we can call the emit method and using this emit method we can emit a named event here let's call this event maybe user created so this line of code it is going to emit an event called user created and when this event is emitted we want to listen for that event so again on this my emitter we can use on method so using on method we can listen to an event here we want to listen to user created event let me copy and use it here and it should be user created okay and when this event happens we want to execute a callback function here i'm using the arrow function so let's say whenever this event is raised we simply want to log a message in the console saying that a new user is created now basically what this code will do is here we are using this emit method to emit a event and we are calling that event user created. So at this line, this user created event will be raised. And as soon as this user created event will be raised, we are listening to that event using this on method. So in that case, this callback function will be executed. And from within this callback function, we are simply logging this message in the console. So this message will be logged in the console. Let's actually see that in action. Let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and let's run this app.js file. And here you will notice that we do not see this message a new user is created. So why is that? That's because when we are emitting this user created event, by that time, this event listener has not been set up. We are setting up this event listener only after emitting the event. That's why we don't see any message logged in the console. So what we need to do is we need to move this line after we have set up our event listener. Okay. So after this line. Now, if I save the changes, if I stop the server by pressing Ctrl C and if I restart this server or basically if I rerun this app.js file, now you will see that this message a new user is created has been logged here. So what has happened here is this user created event was raised. And when this event has been raised, this on method was listening for that event. So when this event was emitted, this on method executed this callback function and this is what we learned in the last lecture 
In the last lecture, we learned that event emitters can emit named events and we can then subscribe to these named events. So basically listen to them and then react accordingly. And if you notice, it's very similar to setting up event listener on the DOM elements in JavaScript. So we can say this on method here, it is quite similar to the add event listener method in JavaScript when we use JavaScript in browser. Now in the last lecture, we also learned that we can set up multiple listeners on the same event. So here I can listen to this user created event multiple times and I can execute different logic each time. So for example, let's say when we are listening for this user created for the first time at that time we are logging this message a new user is created and when we are listening for that event in this second case when we are adding another event listener on that user created event at that time we want to execute some other logic so just for simplicity i will say that a new user is added in database okay and now both of these callback functions will be executed because this event listener currently is listening to the same event, this user created event. So when this user created event will happen, both of these callback functions from these event listeners will be executed. Let's see that in action. So let's save the changes. Let's rerun the app.js file. And you can see, we see both the messages. A new user is created and a new user is added in the database. Now our custom emitter can also emit other events like user updated or user deleted or something like that. And using this on method, we can add listeners for those events as well. All right. Now, when we were listening for this request event here, using this event listener at that time to the callback function, if you notice, we are also receiving some arguments. So how can we do that in case of custom events? Well, that's very simple. All we have to do is for this callback function, we need to specify the parameters which we are expecting. For example, let's say when this callback function will be executed, it is going to receive the ID and name parameter. And now let's go ahead and let's use this ID and name parameter in the output. So here, let's say a new user. Let's use the name parameter here. And here I want to use this template literal syntax. For that, I need to use backticks. So let me change this single quotes to backticks. And now I should be able to use the template detail syntax here. So here we want to say a new user and we want to print his name with ID. And then we want to display the value of the ID parameter is created. Let me copy this and let me use it here as well. And here I want to say is added to database. Okay, and for this callback function also, I want to receive the ID and the name parameter. Now from where we will get the value for this ID and name parameter? We can pass the value for these parameters as the additional argument for the emit method. So here when we are calling the emit method, we are emitting an event. And with that, we can also specify the event data. So here the event data is going to be, let's say ID is going to be 101 and name is going to be John. With this, if I save the changes, let's rerun app.js. You will see we have this message, a new user John with ID 101 is created. And when this second event handler function is executed, it logs a new user John with ID 101 is added to the database. Now, if we don't pass these values, in that case, this ID and name will be assigned with the value undefined. Also, if you notice the log messages, which we see here, these are appearing in the same order as they are declared in the code. So basically every time we run this app.js file and when this user created event is emitted, first this callback function is executed and then this callback function is executed. So they are getting executed in the order in which we have declared them. And this is the normal behavior. If we have multiple listeners for the same event, then they will run synchronously one after the other in the order that they were declared in the code. Okay. So this small example where we are creating a custom event and handling it, it works perfect. But if you have to use this pattern in real world projects, then it's a best practice to create a new class that will inherit from the node.js event emitter class. Let's see that in action. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new module. So inside this modules folder, I'm going to create a new file and I will call it user.js. Inside this, I'm going to create a class and I also want to export this class. For that, I will use module.exports. And in here, the first thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to import the events package. So I'll copy it from here and I will paste it here. And this class should also inherit from the event emitter class. For that, I am going to say extends and the name of the class which we want to inherit. Here, we want to inherit events dot event emitter. Now inside this class, I am going to create a constructor. And from within this constructor, we are going to call the constructor of the base class. Here, the base class is this event emitter class. And to call the constructor of this event emitter class, we can simply use the super keyword. So basically, when we say super, it is going to call the constructor of the base class. In this case, it is going to call the constructor of the event emitter class. And in this way, all the logics which we have in event emitter class for emitting and listening to the events, now those logics will also be available in the user class. Now what we can do is, we can go to app.js and we can go ahead and we can import the user class. For that, I will create a variable. I will call it user. And let's go ahead and let's import this uh, user class which we have just created. For that, here I will say modules. So basically, we have created a new module, this user module, which is going to return us the user class. So this user here will be assigned with this user class, with this class which we are creating here. And since this class is inheriting from the event emitter class, on this class also, we can emit event and we can listen to the events. So now what I'm going to do is, let's scroll down. And here, instead of instantiating the event emitter class directly, I am going to instantiate user class. Okay, so now this my emitter is an instance of this user class. And since this user class internally inherits from the event emitter class, we should be able to emit events like we are doing here on this user class. And we should also be able to listen to the events on this my emitter, the instance of this user class. And this is possible because internally this user class is inheriting from the event emitter class. So if I save the changes here, let's also go ahead and save user.js file. And let me stop the server by pressing Ctrl+C C and let's rerun the app.js. We should have the same output. The only change which we have done here is instead of instantiating the event emitter class, now we are instantiating the user class and we are assigning that instance to this my emitter. And since this user class internally inherits from the event emitter class, we are able to emit events on that user class object and we are also able to listen to the events on that user class object. Okay. Now here you might say that when we were listening for the events on the server object, there we did not emit the events like we are doing here. So here we are emitting the event manually. But in case of server object, when we are listening to this request event, we are not emitting this request event manually, right? That's because there that event will be emitted implicitly by the server object. We do not have to do that manually. The server object internally will take care of that when the request is received on the server. So this was a very basic overview of how we can use event driven architecture in Node.js in our own code and how we can create and listen to custom events. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.